Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. So a few weeks back, I did my first test with Kodak's new Gold and 120 format, just shooting it side by side with Portra 400. And I walked away from that test really impressed and excited about this, just after seeing how close it came in look to Portra after they both scanned and converted. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link below. You should definitely check it out. But there was one thing I was still curious about, and that is just uh, seeing how flexible this is when it comes to both under and overexposure. That was the one thing left that was gonna kind of like seal the deal for me with this new film. So that's what we're gonna look at today in this video. So recently, one evening, decided to grab the Pentax 6-7, loaded up a roll of gold and headed out to a place close to home to do this test. Um, if you're new to this channel and these tests, the process is always to shoot one normal exposed image and then multiple over and under. The scene that we're shooting was just this nice little landscape. It was getting hit with some evening light, has some really kind of bright highlights, also some deep shadows, so a lot to look at afterwards. And just metered it with the Sekonic L558 in spot mode, pulled a few readings off some middle gray areas in the scene, which also matched up with the reading that I was getting from the camera's built-in center weighted meter, so pretty straightforward. Shot all 10 frames as quick as possible before the light changed, used the shutter speed for my exposure adjustment, wrapped things up, sent the film off to the lab, and then once I got it back from the lab, just scanned it here at home myself using the Fuji GFX 100S and Pentax 645 120mm macro lens, and then just converted with negative lab pro and Lightroom. And I'll go into that process a little bit more and talk about it when we look at the images on the computer here shortly. Okay, so we're gonna jump on the computer and take a look at the results. I do just wanna quickly talk about these tests though in general, especially if you're new to the channel and just kind of what I'm looking for from them. So obviously we're looking at the extremes, you know, we're going minus three to plus six. Those are huge ranges. You probably are never gonna end up in those areas unless for some reason you want to, which you can do whatever you want with your images. It doesn't really matter to me. But really for me, this is just a way to understand how this film reacts to different exposures, what point it starts to fall apart, uh, kind of where the flexibility flexibility is, how it scans, say if it's overexposed a little bit, just so when I'm out making images and I get into different situations, I know kind of how I can work with this film and where it starts to break. So really that's it, it's just information um, and you can kind of take this and do whatever you want with it. I would suggest though, um, if you find a film you really like, do one of these yourself with your own process because it's gonna differ a little bit for all of us depending on like our scanning setup, where we get it developed and things like that. So at the very least though, I hope this gives you a feel for how gold uh, in 120 reacts. So let's jump on the computer and take a look. All right, here we go. So like I said, converted using Negative Lab Pro. My process for this, you know, in the past with the exposure tests, I've had lab scans done. I've done some with home scans as well, but really when I'm converting at home, what I'm trying to do is basically get my normal exposure conversion here. And then for each separate exposure or image that I convert, I'm trying to make it look as normal as possible. So I'm trying to make it look like uh, this normal exposure. Uh, and obviously as the exposures get more extreme, you know, under and over, the adjustments get a little heavier, but basically I'm, I wanna figure out like, at what point do these image files get a little too difficult to work with or start to fall apart? So pretty straightforward, but uh, we'll dive in first. We're gonna look at an overall comparison and then we'll look at some details after. So this is the normal exposure. It all, yeah, I mean, pretty straightforward. Everything looks good here. Nice contrasty image. And we're gonna start by going backwards. So we're gonna go to one stop under, which is this one. And you know, with these color negative tests, the underexposure is the least surprising. I always know that, okay, even at one stop, I'm probably gonna see some differences and it's something I want to avoid. Um, that being said, if we go to a comparison, so this is normal on the left and this is one stop under on the right. It's not terrible. I would still personally avoid uh, any type of underexposure and make sure, like I usually do, that you know important areas in the image have density. But it's not, it's not terrible. I mean, one stop under doesn't look that bad here on the right. Two stops under, it's starting to look really bad. You know, the negative's obviously getting thin, not much to work with. It's not the worst, but it is like, it's actually starting to kind of like fog a little bit around the edges, which is strange, but yeah, it doesn't look at quite a drastic difference from that normal. And then obviously three, you know, it just keeps getting worse. Uh, this is, you know, 
I think it's important to point out when we're talking even a stop or two stops, but especially three and more, these are really large uh, variances. Like these are large adjustments uh, in, in exposure. But yeah, one isn't terrible, two not great, three not great. Nothing surprising here at all. I would still try and avoid any type of underexposure. Okay, but we'll go back to the normal and we're gonna start doing the overexposure. This is what I'm always most curious about and I was also uh, very impressed. I'll say that right now. So normal and this is one. You can see when we just flip between them, you'd be hard pressed to, uh, to see a difference between the two. So this is one stop over and then we're gonna go to two. One stop over, two stops over, same thing. Uh, this is what impressed me the most. We'll go back to the normal and we'll go to comparison view. So normal on the left and then one stop over on the right and they almost look identical. The one stop over corrected just fine and it looks, it looks great. And then here's two, you know, more of the same, two stops over corrected just fine as well. Personally, I wouldn't hesitate at all if for some reason I needed to kind of go this far with the film. It's cool, cool to see that it has no issues handling it. And like I said, we'll dive into details a little bit uh, later here. So three stops still looks pretty good. I did start to notice as the overexposure got more extreme, the shadows started to get like really cool and like a magenta cast to them, which again, I was correcting out. You could do a better job than this as well, but that's something I started to notice. But even three stops is not, it's not terrible. Like the image is still completely workable. Four stops, more of the same. Starting to get a little weird now. The highlights are to be expected. You know, again, four stops is a lot. I don't know how you would ever end up this far unless you wanted to. And then five, starting to get pretty contrasty. And six, so more of the same. But, I mean, overall, th even three stops looks pretty good, but one stop and two stop, it's, it's behaving pretty much like the results I saw from a Portra or from a, a Fuji Pro 400H, which is cool to see, because obviously gold is the cheaper film, so part of me just expected that it wasn't gonna do too well with this, but you know, at one and two stops, even three, which is right here, the film still looks really good and wasn't that difficult to work with. So cool to know that it's it's got some decent flexibility when it comes to overexposure. Okay, so next we're gonna jump in and just look at details a little closer with this. Uh, but before we do that, just quickly have to take a second to uh, talk about today's sponsor for this video, which is Squarespace. As a creative who's often wearing multiple hats, Squarespace has just saved me so much time and energy over the years by offering a wide range of templates to choose from that are really high quality, uh, but also the fact that it's just so straightforward and intuitive to use. So, for example, if you want to build a photography website, load in your images, and then if you wanted to do something like rearranging or sequencing, it's as easy as just clicking and dragging the photographs around. So just the little things like that that really save a lot of headaches and make life easier. So check out squarespace.com today. You can sign up for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below, which is squarespace.com slash Kyle McDougall. It'll save you 10% off first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, let's get back into it. So like I said, we're gonna look at details and what I'm most curious about with this overexposure are these areas. So we have normal on the left and we have one stop over on the right. And what I wanna see is like this detail in these extreme highlights, you know, on this white paper being lit by the sun. When does that start to fall apart? Cause that's something that's really good to know. So you can see normal on the left, one stop over. Uh, it still looks really good. There's, you know, this like text on this paper on the door looks good. Not a huge difference. So this is two stops, we'll go even further in here. So you can see at two stops, you know, this is splitting hairs. It is, we are starting to lose detail in the extreme highlights, especially if we look down here on this paper, but this is minimal, you know, we're zoomed into like 200% here. So even at two stops over, these highlights are still holding up pretty well. Okay, three stops, now you can see starting to lose detail for sure. This is this is getting really hot, really dense for sure, so not surprising. So I would say maybe one to two stops max, 
three is starting to lose a little bit, but that's still really good. That's impressive for me. So cool to see. And then last thing that I want to look at is just, you know, the, the flexibility, because obviously you can go and you can edit these files however you want. So this normal exposure here, obviously this is a high contrast scene. The negative had pretty good density throughout, but we do have these really deep shadow areas that were probably gonna be a little bit uh, thin on the negative. And you can see that like, even if we jack the shadows up to 100, they still hold up pretty well. Like they're, the image itself is clean uh, for, for how this was. So it, for me, it's cool to see that I could scan it this way and have like a high contrast scene that has good density throughout, but maybe it's a little thin in some areas and it still, it still corrects. It still edits quite well. Uh, compared to, obviously, once we start to get into like the one stop under, you start to get some flatness and some noise. And here's the normal. You know, and then taking that the other way, say we go up to this like three stops over where we were starting to lose some detail in the highlights. Maybe we could pull some of those back. Not gonna obviously get it all back, but there is room to, to still uh, tweak that a little bit and it, it, it brings a little bit of that back. Also, it's worth mentioning, you know, your results are gonna be based off what you're using to scan. So like I said, this was GFX 100S. Obviously it's a higher end camera. You'd probably see similar from like a cool scan or a professional lab scanner. Uh, a cheaper setup or, or something that doesn't deal as well with uh, like density, like a uh, Epson flatbed, you probably won't see the same results. So just keep that in mind as well. Uh, and that's why I always suggest, you know, even if you watch these, I still think you should take whatever film you like working with the best and go and do a test yourself and run it through your process and see what flexibility you get from that exact kind of workflow uh, that you're used to. Okay, so, you know, wrapping this test up, I kind of walk away from this one, just like I did in the previous one, you know, really impressed and even more excited about this new film stock. Uh, obviously with the bean color negative film, I expected some flexibility, but it is really cool to see that, you know, one to two stops of overexposure, you can correct it and it looks almost identical, other than a little bit of loss in those like extreme highlight areas, which is to be expected. Uh, but really cool to see, you know, obviously if money wasn't an option, I would still probably choose portrait just for the extra speed. I feel like it is a little bit cleaner too. But I mean, for the price, especially here in England, there's a pretty big price gap between this and Portra 400. I think this is an incredible option and really impressed with uh, the job that Kodak's done with this new film stock. So excited to shoot quite a bit of this moving forward and excited by these results. So hope this helps you uh, and gives you something to work with. And other than that, I just wanna say, as always, thank you for watching the channel. Appreciate all of you and the support. And I'll talk to you soon.